like and subscribe. Hey guys, welcome back to the Anime Culture Corner. Even though Fall 2020 seriously has some amazing anime for us, what's lingering on most of our minds is surely Winter 2021, the season of sexy ass sequels. Promise Neverland, ReZero, Dr. Stone, and last but certainly not least, Attack on Titan Season 4, aka The Last Season. I read the manga and I can tell you, it's gonna be an insane season to say the least. And the manga isn't even done yet. But I'm not here to talk about the manga at all actually. And this is an anime only video. About everything you need to know for the anime before the fourth and final season comes around. Spoiler warning, only to people who haven't watched seasons 1 through 3. Let's get it. We ended last season learning about the truth about what's outside the walls. The secret of the basement that we've been longing to learn about since Attack on Titan anime first aired in 2013. Yes, seven whole years ago. Let that sink in. Grisha, Eren's father, fought for the freedom of the Eldians. The Eldians are a race descended from Ymir, the original progenitor of all nine Titan shifters, and was the original founding Titan, who we know is now inside of Eren. He has both the attack Titan and the founding Titan. And if you forgot, the name of the show no Kyojin. is named after the Attack Titan within Eren. Roll credits! But back to the Eldians. They essentially shaped the history of the main continent, breeding and expanding the Eldian race until the Marlians rose up and successfully defeated them, taking seven of the nine Titan shifters for their own. There's an interesting contradiction between how the Marlians and how the Eldians view history. Grisha describes Ymir's actions as beneficial for the advancement of the life on the main continent, while the Marlians essentially frame it as mass genocide both of which are probably true. And for future reference, there's the main continent, where Marlians live, and Paradis, which is the island that all of our favorite characters live on. And we know that the two other titans who weren't taken by Marley were the Attack Titan, passed down from Aaron Kruger to Grisha to Aaron Yeager, and the Founding Titan, which went from the original King of the Walls down to the Royal Bloodline and is now also in Aaron. And so we've seen eight of nine titans, the Beast and Zeke, the Cart, the Jaw, which was in Ymir, not the progenitor Ymir, but his story's friend Ymir, the Colossal, now held by Armin, the female, and Annie, who's being held somewhere within the walls, the Armored, and of course, the Attack Titan and Founding within Aaron. This leaves one unaccounted for within Marley. Remember that. There's also something incredibly interesting that happened in Aaron Kruger's last moments with Grisha on the wall, telling him to save Armin and Mikasa and the others. How the f*** does he know about them, decades before they're even born? Since this is, of course, the last season, it's no spoiler to say that we will figure this out. And it might blow your mind. There was also an unexplained moment when Eren kissed Historia's hand after receiving his Medal of Honor after the battle at Wal Maria, where he looks extremely unsettled after seeing memories of his father's the night he ate the Founding Titan. Which is strange, because he's clearly been witnessing his father's memories for days leading up to this point, so what made this one stand out? Eren also realized that when he used the power of the Founding Titan in Season 2, it was because the titan who he punched was in fact Dina Fritz, the former wife of his father, Grisha, mother of Zeke, and descendant of the royal family, who are the only people who can wield the founding titan's powers. This implies that contact with a royal family member allows Eren access to his true powers. I'm sure this is the reason behind his shock in seeing whatever happened when Historia let him kiss her hand, as she is royal blood. It's fair to say that we still have a lot to learn about Eren's powers in both the attack titan and the founding. So what's happening with everyone else? Armin feels guilty about being given life over Erwin, and certainly Levi feels some of this burden as well. My theory on why he gave it to Armin? Well, I think it's because Armin has more potential. Erwin has believed for a long time that history was faked, which it was, but never really acted on it. I think that the change Levi sees Armin making and potential in this new generation of scouts is the reason he let Armin live, knowing that he could bring forward the shift in history that Erwin was unable to do. Mikasa is... skinnier? And Eren is... Wondering whether eliminating everyone on the mainland will save the Eldians within the walls. A dangerous idea, but one that we saw in Grisha, his father, as well. The question of who deserves to live. The Eldians within the wall, who have never done anything to harm Marlians but carry the blood of devils? Or the Marlians, who have suppressed and tortured Eldians for decades now in repentance of the likely equally bad, if not worse, crimes their ancestors committed? I mean, I'm taking Aaron's side here, but the line's pretty blurry. And so here we are, on the forefront of a new continent and a complete shift in the plot of Attack on Titan, creating a world bigger than what I'm sure any of us initially expected from the show. From revealing the last Titans, to what Eren saw when he touched Historia, to what his plan even is moving forward, we've essentially begun an entirely new show as we begin Season 4 with so many more questions than answers, and I know for a fact that this season will go down in history, so get hype. As always, this has been the Anime Culture Corner. Don't forget to like and subscribe for future in-depth show manga and character analyses.